Welcome back to this week's episode of Between Two Teachers. I'm Madeline Cronenberg. And I'm Consuelo Lara. And we're speaking to you from the sacred native land of Chochenyo Karkin Ohlone here in West Contra Costa. And we're going to continue to to open every episode with uh, the recognition of, uh, of the sacred land that we are on. Um, this episode is being done uh, at last, it's our last episode of 2019. It's a holiday episode, uh, so to speak. And uh, if we look at what's happening in our nation politically, this is the day after, uh, or two days after now, the president has been impeached, so the impeachment is into full swing. Um, and we're looking back at what's happened in education this year. And a number of things has ha have happened that, have, that were critical that we've spoken about uh, at length here on, uh, on, in this venue. Uh, one of the biggest ones uh, that I want to give just in terms of an update for something we've talked about recently is, uh, is not national, because I think the national, um, the, the national conversation has been, uh, has been very much dominated by the presidential election. And there was a... Uh, a there was last week there was an education, uh, I guess it was a town hall all day and, and a number of the candidates spoke about education and I had, we had mentioned that last week uh, on, on the, our last episode. It, it's well worth watching just to get a sense of where people are at and, uh, and understand there are big differences and it, at least they finally did talk about education which, is a, which in itself is a big difference because that, that hasn't even happened before. Uh, so that's, that was the national story, and it's still to be seen who had, is, is the strongest education candidate. That they're vying for it in different ways, although uh, they're Bernie Sanders, I've been, my belief, is the one they have to beat because he's got the strongest education package in terms of making, protecting um, districts and, and um, uh, public schools from privatization. He really does address it. But um, in addition to that, there's the, the news that uh, I talked about last week on the state level. And that was Rochester, New York. And they, there was a strike and many people went to the board meetings there. There was you know, an unbelievable uh, pressure. What happened there in a district very similar to West Contra Costa, same size, 29,000 children, basically the same budget. They have the same deficit, but they don't have the same reserve. And that makes all the difference. Made all the difference. That made the difference for 200 people whose jobs were lost as of December 31st. And there wasn't really, a, they saved a few of them somehow by moving the salaries to grant funding, which is what you can do. But, so there were a few people who got saved from the original number, but basically um, everyone else is gone and they don't have a chance of getting them back because they don't have a way to recover the, the, mm -hmm. the funding. And, and the other part of that is that, although certainly I don't mean to say that there's anything, I, that they're not identical, but some of it is the same, and that is the special ed implications. Mm -hmm. They are mm -hmm. a district that has mm -hmm. a very large special ed population, and the um, uncontrolled expenses in special ed really must be addressed, because Rochester is the canary here, and we would be too if we didn't yes. have the reserve. Yeah. Yeah, the point is that our situation is not unique and that all over there are very similar situations and worse because we did, we were smart enough to have these, these reserves and that would have been us. Yeah, you know, that would I mean, and this situation. is the, the thing about this is that we get labeled as, as mismanaging and it's not just us but other districts as well and if you're, if, if you have a, a situation like they had in Rochester, everybody there is saying they're mismanaged and they're bringing in the SEC and they're bringing in all kinds of investigators from the state. And in the end, it may simply be that what happened was they never had the money to put into the reserves or made the commitment to put the money into the reserves. In our district, we had been through a bankruptcy. So we were not going to let that happen. We had a real consciousness. It was the same board 
or some of us who had been on the board when we came out of bankruptcy, who were not going to let our reserves go down. And when we had extra money, even though people, not everybody wanted us to do that, they wanted us to spend it. But we didn't. We put it in there for the rainy day because we have volatile funding streams and we knew that we could have issues with how much money we, were, we would be receiving from the state. That's ultimately not what happened. What happened was the special ed uh, over not, the special ed yeah. Uh, yeah. funding uh, irregularities, right? The, it was that we didn't expect it, and there was no way you can predict it. And the consequence of that is that you wind up having you wind up having less money to spend, even if your budgets stay the same. The special ed dollars go up so high. Um, Anyhow, yeah. I just wanted to yeah. call out the fact Good. that Rochester, that it did happen in Rochester, and it could have happened here. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And so there, that was that news in, in uh, education this week. And then we had our district meeting this week. Yes, we had our last uh, board meeting of the year, and um, it was very interesting. First part was the change of governance. Uh, um, Trustee Jarvis uh, Hernandez Jarvis is now the board president, mm -hmm. and I am now the clerk. Yes, you so. have moved into leadership. <laughs> yes, very nice, very nice. So um, get to have more say so about that agenda, and uh, I'm very honored. I just think you know it's wonderful to be there. I'm like I said, I never knew I'd be doing this at, at my age, but I'm honored and I'm up for it. It's, it's been uh, it, just very energizing, and I feel like this is where I need to be, in the right place at the right time. And I'm going to keep fighting for many things, that, uh, especially for our students who don't have a voice, the students who are underrepresented and uh, underserved. So that is a very big deal. The other thing that happened at the school board meeting was the... Uh, uh, John Henry High School came up for a renewal, and uh, there were a lot of parents there, of course, and uh, very loud, very angry. And unfortunately, the administration of that school did not make good choices, did not make good decisions when it came to being in compliance, following the Ed Code, hiring people who were credentialed, providing special ed, providing appropriate ELD. I mean, it, it, there's no way to sugarcoat this. Those things were not met. And if they're not met, you can't have this school. And one of the things, you know, I have an administrative credential that I got. And I remember the big thing about getting your administrative credential, you learn about ed code. You learn about compliance. You learn how to stay in, you know, within the law because you are legally responsible for all of that, you personally. So in order to be a competent, effective administrator of a, of a school, you have to have that training. You have to have, that's why there's a certificate so that you have been trained how to do that. And I have no idea if this person has one and if they do, then they didn't use whatever you know they learned because clearly none of that was uh, was used in making the decisions. And, and we had so, a staff report, right? The staff oh yeah. report, yeah. which is, you know, in the end, every uh, board makes its decision not in a vacuum and not just based on what they feel like or who they like or don't like, but based on the facts that are before them, particularly with uh, the very important uh, issue of uh, possibly closing a school. And we had a very detailed staff report from the, uh, from the uh, charter school office of West Contra Costa that recommended that this school not be renewed. Exactly. And she was very clear in that report. Uh, I, it was very detailed, like you said, and uh, it validated everything. They didn't just pull it out of the air. It was statements and then validation and uh, proof of all of these, um, you know, places where they were not following the um, Ed Code and uh, compliance issues. So uh, 
you know, I yeah, th- trusted them completely. This was report. beyond just the political conversation around the um, the, the issues of uh, charter schools more broadly. Yeah. Right. So that's one yeah. conversation. Yeah. But this is very specific to this school. Exactly. And uh, and it was it was not really refuted. No. No. It it was more just well talking bad about other schools. So that was yeah, the that, not... that was the bad thing that happened. We had a, a teacher come up who was from Kennedy and talked about uh, how you know she didn't like that people were bashing her high school. Well, I heard later that she was screamed at by some parents. I mean, the behavior there was uh, was very unbecoming and negative and even hostile, and it's just not appropriate. That there's no need for that. And again, I, you know, I really don't blame parents and I don't blame students for any of that. It really comes down to the leadership because the leadership creates the culture of a school, creates the climate of a school, and certainly creates how you proceed forward uh, in, in behaviors. So I just think that they were prompted and they were, you know, riled up and they told them things. And then afterwards, there were threats. Can you imagine? I mean, this is, it's, it was very negative and unfortunate, but I, I, I was shocked. I was shocked about the behaviors and the inappropriateness. And I'm glad, I regret nothing. I think that's not the best environment. If my child was in that school, I would not want them to stay there. Um, and I did bring it up that we have, I tried that they went to another charter school in our, in our district, I think I thought we had three or four, but we might have more than that. Uh, charter high schools would be better than this situation, which was really not not very good at all. And as well as our other schools, which are wonderful and have band and music and all kinds of things. So I would encourage those parents to go and visit. Just take a tour of these other schools. You have so many choices, almost 10 high schools, which is way too many for this district but um it i think it went well uh, uh shout out to uh trustee um hernandez jarvis conducted it the uh, meeting very well and um we had a lot of support there i'm i'm just really pleased with the outcome and this school will probably go to the county so everybody needs to understand that and we'll personally be talking to people at the county Hopefully they'll see the, the uh, tape of that meeting so they can get more information. And I'm not sure if they'd be able to go to the state at this point or has that know. part has changed in the law. I don't know. Yeah, we don't know I'm yet. I'm sure they yeah. know. I'm, I'm sure their attorneys have uh, yeah. looked into that. But, yeah. So uh, the one thing I wanted to mention, is we've talked here about um, what's happened at Oakland meetings where there's been the same thing, where it's broken down and there's been violence, right? And, um, and, and certainly there are similarities between what happened the other night and what's happened in Oakland. And all of that, it, I believe, is, is fueled by uh, the parent. First of all, there, it, there are the administrators who are, who are managing and, uh, um, and, and behind their own agenda. But it's also fueled by parents who've made a choice to put their children somewhere where they thought, where they and and they very well do still believe that their child is is being served, and that's true in the schools, the district schools that they're trying to close in Oakland, and that's true here at uh, at John Henry, and uh, and so that going in, you, we have to know that that level of of emotional connection is there. And in each case, the you know it, certainly in Oakland they've, they've had to make the decision. I just sort of want to say that what I think is the difference between what happened in Oakland and what happened here to me. And the difference is in Oakland, they're making arbitrary, what I think are arbitrary choices that are purely financial, and based on this uh, set of decisions that that neighborhood schools don't serve uh, the community. It's just a real underpinning of what they're saying. They're not saying uh, this list of schools, each of these schools 
has a report, a negative report, like the report we're talking about here. Here, the issue is, I mean, the pain is the same, they're losing their school, but the policy issue behind it is very different. It's saying that this particular school is not serving these children, and, and here's the proof of, of how it's not. So I just wanted to make that distinction because we have talked here about Oakland and, mm, and, mm -hmm. uh, and stood up for the folks that wanted to keep a school open in Oakland, right? Because we've said that. So I don't, mean, I don't want it to, to look hypocritical to somebody who's listening to us and saying, well, you know, you're, uh, you're, you're hypocrites. I don't think we are for that very reason. I would believe, I believe, I believe in neighborhood schools. And I, I think that, uh, smaller schools do serve their communities. I think in the end, it breaks down to people take the bigger schools and then break them into smaller schools when they get there. So having them in the community, having, commu having the school be the hub of the community, to me, is an important thing to do. And I think that's where, th that's where my values are. Um, and that's why the Oakland model of closing 24 schools uh, is based completely on, uh, on uh, Dean County, right? And, and having made financial choices that came as a result of a lot of pressures that they had put on them by the foundations and the, the people that came in and with all the money to Oakland. Right, and I think, I think uh, when we make that comparison, uh, the, the mistakes in Oakland were made a long time ago. Mm -hmm. And in a way, I feel like last night or la Wednesday, we, avo we took a step to avoid that. You know what I mean? That we looked at and we could take it. It wasn't our student member, board member. He was so eloquent and especially he could talk about the money issue and the financial impact. He did. Oh, my goodness. Luca? Yeah. And so in a way, I feel like we took a step of, to avoid the eventual, because what they were doing, it was rubber stamping char uh, charter schools. And we avoided doing that. Right. We're not going to just rubber stamp them all. And then what happens? You're forced to close these schools. So I think by being very particular about the schools that we have here and looking at them very closely and not rubber stamping them. And it's, you know, to our board, to our superintendent, that we have that kind of critical eye and we're not all just charter people the way in Oakland unfortunately they do have a lot of people and high management who are charter funded well and, and the yeah. fact that they are now going to you know institute the portfolio model big so, mistake yeah well yeah, it, it, I know. it undermines the district yes, yes. right who, there's there are winners and losers there actually if i could yes. interject with that part the um i just want to point out in regards to Oakland uh, which I do uh, substituting in. Um, the most recent charter school that they agreed not to renew the contract of was a school called Roses in Concrete. And it's important enough to know um, that that school in particular was actually a fairly diverse school. And it was actually also a school that had promoted uh, unionizing the teachers as well and had a lot of parent involvement in running that school. And it just so happens out of all the charter schools that they agreed to, um, to you know, um, cancel. There were three charter schools up at that last meeting. And it just so happened to have been the one with the unionized teachers. And that's incredible, isn't it? The, the situation they have, and they actually have, still have people coming up wanting to open new schools. I mean, that's what, they did a moratorium a while back, and they wouldn't be where they are right now. So that, that's just... It tells you it's when you go down that road. Uh, we it's know a complicated happen. story, and in 2020, this, it's going to you know just continue on. It's it it is not resolved anywhere. It's not resolved in West Contra Costa. It's not resolved in, in anywhere in California or throughout the country. I mean, that's that's, that's right. one thing yeah. that we know. But e each decision has to be you know you can look at how it impacts the whole, but you just have to look at each decision also individually and why uh, each decision maker ma made the choice that he or she makes behind yeah. a decision. Because, yeah. in fact, yeah. Wednesday's decision was not unanimous. Correct. Correct. Yeah. So let's uh, not uh, 
sugarcoat that. It was not unanimous. No, and you know what? I think that's a good thing. I think it's a good thing because I feel like we have a really strong board now having been there for a year, and I really respect everybody on the board and their decisions. They, I think everybody's doing the best they can based on their values, their perspective, their, you know, I can't say anything we're not all in agreement, which is a good thing. I think that's mm -hmm. a good thing. You want that diversity. You want that argument. Um, and so, yeah, there were a couple of surprises of people who voted yeah. for it and vo voted against it. But um, I think uh, it, I was. I'm so. Cl I'm very proud of the board for the decision that that we made. It was so, a strong night. Yeah, it was very nice. Very nice. So more to come. More to come. I want to share something personal. Mm -hmm. You know, I got this memo from our uh, lawyer, I guess, uh, the district lawyer, that my uh, emails have been, or no, my texts have been, I don't know how they do that. How do people get a hold of your texts? No, they requested them. Oh, they request It's a public them. request. It's I mean, a public request because I'm have a public. A, and they have a right to do that. And I'm a public figure yes. or whatever. Okay. So You're I. Public I, servant. I, public servant. And I said, well, I mean, this is new to me. <laughs> I never heard of such a thing. But anyway, um, a couple of things. So I, I have to say, here are the things that they're investigating. Uh, when I was running for a campaign, there was a staff person who said, oh, you know, I want to vote for you. Want to give me some signs, you know. And I said, sure, I'll take them to your house. And just, you know, without thinking, she kind of said, you know, drop them off at my office. Well, first thing I thought was like, hmm, don't think you're supposed to do that. And so I told her that, and so I ended up giving them to her house. Perfectly innocent. Where, where is the drama there, the, the corruption in that simple act? And then the, what's the other one that happened uh, a little bit later on where supposedly I said, uh, I'm going to ask for this information about a charter school. Be prepared to come to the um, podium with that. I think that's my job, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And that's her job, isn't it? Where's the corruption in that? So lawyers, you really, and people who are hiring these lawyers, you're really wasting your money because I, like, where is the corruption in those? Those are the two things that I see that they're, okay, they're going to, I don't know, am I going to go to court for these or what? I, I don't know what can happen. So nothing's going nothing's to happen. But I think it's a it's a tactic of an intimidation, don't yeah. you think? Okay, that's what it well, is. Well, in, in, in fact, uh, and it's this is a legal thing, and I, and I will say that uh, earlier this year we talked about uh, MichaelColhas.com, and that is a uh, somebody, and this literally is a mysterious somebody because he has protected his name. Uh, anyway, this person runs a uh, website and has hired somebody, the staff, um, to do Freedom of Information Act requests, and Freedom of Information Act requests are public records. You're asking for public records. And uh, and that's exactly what happened here. We have had it happen in the district for years and years and years. Uh, the doing of it, and, and the, the Public Records Act request, that's why we know the California Charter School Association's uh, ulterior, ulterior motives, is because he uncovered that through his FOIA request yes. of yes. Uh, Green Dot Charter School. Yes. And yes. of Mr. Mel Voin, who was the uh, a board member at the time, who was sharing, and the superintendent in, um, in Los LAUSD, who were sharing their information with uh, CCSA. So it's, I, I would say it's a good thing. Yeah. It's, it's a good thing that you can get these records, absolutely. I mean, and it's just, if you have sure, nothing to hide, not? then I, you If can you have, have nothing to hide, exactly, exactly. And so since I don't, I will share it publicly whenever I get these requests to let you know what they're looking at because it's so interesting. Right, and, <laughs> and, and it just gives you a hint. It's, and, and honestly, with the Colhaus thing, what they were looking for is, so what, do you have connections? And yeah. turned out, oh, yes, we do. Yes. <laughs> And you would have oh. never known it unless you did the FOIA request. Yeah. And then those 60,000 pages later or whatever it was, That's you, you find out how many they have. Yeah. So, yeah, more to come. I'll, uh, I'll share more of that. You know, I, in our Friday memo, I came across something. They have uh, the 2019 Magnificent Seven winner, Gustavo Aguilera, the principal accountant at West Contra Costa Unified School District, got an award. 
And I just thought, you know, this guy should have come to, we should have been able to honor him at yes. one of our board meetings. Yes, considering that the, yes. account, the accounting department has gone through such oh. upheaval. Yeah, getting such a bad rap. Right. I mean, really, if yeah. anybody has. Yeah, it's I would have liked to, to see this young man and yes. shake his hand. And so hopefully we'll do, oh, I'll hold it up. There you go. Now you can see him. That's him. Uh, almost, I almost got him. Award winning. Cool. So we want to do more of that. Uh, right. Honoring our best, acknowledgement, and things like that. So can't think of anything else. Uh, I How think about we're, you? We're wrap, ready to wrap up the year yeah. now. What we do want to do is ask people to like, share, and subscribe, subscribe. to this channel. Or, and if you're watching us on Facebook, to do the same. I know many of you, I put, we post it both on Facebook and, uh, and on YouTube. But the, the, and the links are, or I try to put the links in both places so that you know what we're talking about. And we want to shout out to a few people. Yes. Uh, Francine. And we've decided to <laughs> shout out, give a real shout out to the people who we know are among our, uh, our big fans. And we know that because you commented and said something. <laughs> so the um, biggest one is Francie. Francie, we are so happy you watch. <laughs> and I think the other one is Demetrio. Demetrio. But Demetrio has been on the show. Yes. So, uh, yes. But so hi, Demetrio. Hi, we know you're watching. <laughs> and hi, Francie. We know you're, we know you're watching. Um, and we look forward to others watching as well. And, and if you write to us, we'll yeah. give you a shout out. We'll give you a shout out. Just put, a, put something in the comments. Oh, we'll give you a shout do out. we have a quick uh, joke? Uh, yes. Uh, disembodied voice here again. Um, let's see. Uh, oh. Where do... Uh, no. Why? Why do... No. What do elves go to elementary school for? Or elf school for elf. Oh, anyway, go ahead. Why? To learn the alphabet. And there you have it. To Whoa. learn the alphabet. <laughs> like, share, and subscribe. Merry Christmas. We'll Happy see you New next year. year. Merry Christmas. Happy okay. holidays. Bye bye. Oh, yeah, our swag. Look at Ooh. this. Cool is this? Mm -hmm. There we go. Let us know if you want to order one of our cool cups. Oh yeah, we'll put that. In. <laughs> <laughs> They're only a hundred thousand dollars a piece. <laughs> it's just jacket. <laughs> Yeah, we, we need batteries for our camera. <laughs> <laughs> and food. And food. 